Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today's a more advanced video for the developers. We're going to talk about Record Set Clone. No, not clown. Clone. Record Set Clone. This is a cool feature in Access where you can play around with the data under a form without actually having to integrate and use the forms, controls, and stuff. I'll explain it better in just a minute. All right, so what is a record set clone? Well, a record set clone is basically a copy of the same data that your form is already sitting on. Now, it's not the same as the table or query that the form is based on, but it's literally what data is in the form because you can apply filters and stuff like that, which will change the record set clone. So it's essentially all of the data that's in your form. Think of it like another layer below it, right? Now, when you open a form in Access, the form itself is bound to a record set behind the scenes. The clone gives you another pointer to the same data without disturbing what the user sees on the screen. Now, it's not a new query or a new data set. It's just a parallel pointer or a handle into the same data. Now, the big advantage is you can move around, search, or loop through records in the clone without kicking the form's cursor around. So you're not moving around on the screen. I've showed a lot of videos where you can do things like go to control, go to record, and that all moves around on the screen and it's slow and it's error prone, okay? With a record set clone, you can do that moving around in the data and do stuff and even change stuff. And if you're, let's say, looking for a record, once you find it, then you can sync the form to the record that you're on using the bookmark, okay? It's like you bookmark this and say, okay, bookmark Eddie Van Halen. And now you can move this forms bookmark to the same thing that you found in here. And this makes record set clones especially useful for things like finding records, but you can also count or sum records, uh, you know, do, do background checks and updates and all kinds of stuff. I'm going to give you a list of things you can do a little bit later on. So in short, a record set clone is like a backstage pass to the forms data. You get to look around, manipulate it quietly, and then decide if and when you want to pull the user on the form along with you into the record set clone. All right, let's take a look at an example, but first a couple of prerequisites. Of course, this is a developer level video, so you'll need to know some VBA. If you've never watched any VBA lessons before, go watch this one. It'll get you started. If you don't know what a record set is, go watch this first. A record set and a record set clone are very, very similar, but a record set clone essentially is a record set that's attached to a form, basically, in a nutshell. But it, it helps to learn record sets first because you can set up your own record sets, which just exist in memory. And you can loop through them and change records and do stuff. So go watch the record sets video first if you if you haven't seen this yet, and then come back and learn about record set clones. Record set clone is saying basically clone the record set that's behind this form. That's why they call it a clone. It's like that Star Trek episode where the, the next generation where the Enterprise goes to the planet and they're all clones. And it's like clones, clones, clones. <laughs> And if you're not familiar with the other method that I show how to open a form and, and find a record, go watch this video because instead of using a filter or a where condition, you, you might want to open the form and have the user still be, oops, someone's beaming in. You might still want the user to be able to use the navigation buttons and move between the records. So you wanna open up to a specific record and, and display that one, but still have the rest of the records there. To do this, we open the form we go to control and then we find the record, which, which moves around in the, in the user interface and it's a little clunky and it's actually prone to some errors. We'll talk more about this in a bit, but if you wanna learn this, because sometimes it's, sometimes it's better to learn the not so great way first so that you appreciate why this better method is better. So that's why I always teach this other method first. And now I can show you the better method. It's more, it's a little more complicated. It's a couple more lines of code, but it's, it's a better solution. All right, so go watch all those prerequisite videos first. They're free. They're on my YouTube channel. They're on my website. Go watch those and come on back. All right, here I am in my tech help free template. This is a free database. You can grab off my website if you want a copy. 
And in here, I've got a customer list. And then the customer list, you can double click on one of these guys and it opens up the customer form, right? There's the individual customer form. Now notice it's filtered. All right, yeah, you could turn off the filter, but then it puts you back on record one. So that's not always desirable. And sometimes you wanna go right to that record. So what do we do here? Well, in this guy, in the on double click event right there, we've got, oh, let me resize this real quick. Sometimes when I'm playing around off camera, I move things around. Okay, we've got an open customer sub that we built. It just checks to see if the customer ID is null. And then it does an open form customer F comma, 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 chameleon, where the customer ID is equal to the customer ID on that list form. And what that does is it opens it up, but the where condition puts a filter on it. Now, if you don't wanna do that, if you wanna get rid of that filter and still allow the user to jump around, you can do the other method that I show in the open form unfiltered video, which basically is then once you got the form open, do command dot go to control the customer ID. And this assumes customer ID is visible on the form because I don't always put the IDs visible in a, in, a, in a finished database. But once you're on that, then you can use a search. You can do do command dot find record and then, oh, just customer ID for that. And then all the other default options are fine for that search. All right, save it. And now when I do this, it does open it, but it involves go to control and I, I, that's, it's, it's prone to problems. We'll talk more specifics about the problems later, but here's the better way to do it. The better way to do it is to open the form and then create a record set clone of the form, which is basically down here in memory, right? Find the record and then match the bookmarks. Okay, here's how that works. Are you ready? A little more advanced. Now these two lines up top are still the same. We're still gonna check for an all customer ID. We're still gonna open up the form. Now, next we're gonna dim RS as a record set. Okay, we're gonna set RS equals forms customer F dot record set clone. Okay, that makes a record set clone which is pointing to the records in that form. Now in the record set, we're gonna say rs.find first, and then this will look like an actual where condition. So it'll be customer ID equals customer ID on this customer list form that we're on. Remember right now we're on this customer list form. All right. So now we've found, well, hopefully we've found that record. It should, it should exist because if it's in the list, it should exist in the other one. But you never know, especially in a multi-user database, things can happen that might disappear at the last minute. So next you want to check to see if you've actually found it. If rs.no match, math, if no math, not no match, then we haven't found it. Message box, customer, not found. And here you can close the customer form if you want to, or you could go to a new record if it doesn't exist, whatever you want to do. I'll just close the form. Do command.close, uh, ac form, and then customer f here else this means we've found it so now we're going to match up the bookmarks we're going to say okay you found a you found a customer in the record set clone so your bookmark your cursor in the record set clone is on let's say record seven all right so now i want to take the form that i've got and match that bookmark it'll basically move the cursor it'll move the record you're on to the whatever's bookmarked all right so forms customer f dot bookmark Bookmark basically means the record that you're on equals RS bookmark. I can't type today. There it is. And if, right? At this moment here, when the find is successful, okay, you've found it. So now it's moved the focus to that record. So that's what your bookmark is. Bookmark is whatever page you're on in a book, right? Same thing with record sets. It's whatever record you happen to be sitting on when you're doing searches, moving around, that kind of stuff. So now all we're gonna say is, okay, I want the forms bookmark to be equal to the record sets bookmark. Just move us to that page. All right, and then of course some cleanup, RS close, set RS equals nothing, right? If you set it, you gotta forget it. Save it, debug compile once in a while, close it, open it, and let's open up Jean-Luc, ready? Boom, and there it is. And we're on four of 33. 
we didn't do any do command go to control nonsense because yeah, because you're moving around in the user interface when you do that go to control go to record those kind of commands those are okay for beginner programmers and uh, believe me i use them a lot when i was getting started i still have some of that in my database i'm slowly working on getting rid of all of it <laughs> But I'm always very much so if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So if it's working, I kind of tend to leave it. Although sometimes once in a while it does break. Because if you've got code heavily reliant on looping and stuff through the user interface, moving through fields in a form and stuff, if the user happens to click while that's happening, it can mess everything up. So this is why I try to prefer stuff like this that doesn't involve the user interface. The magic happens in the background and then bam, at the last minute, you just move to where it is. Now, some other benefits of using a record set clone. So major advantages of the record set clone, it's direct, it's not user interface driven. You're not working with the form, right? You're working with the form's data engine underneath it instead of simulating keystrokes or you know moving to different controls, moving to different records, all that stuff. Uh, be a precise targeting, use an exact where clause instead of relying on search settings. It's silent, there's no flicker, no pop-ups, no cursor jumps, no moving around on the screen. It's just instant. It goes right to the record you want. It works in more context. It's usable in forms. You can do some stuff with record set clones and reports and even background record set operations. There's lots you can do with it. It's faster, especially with very, very large data sets. Okay? It, since it skips the UI navigation, it searches the data directly. Whereas find record, it sometimes has to walk through the user, user interface. Partial matches, formatting can break searches. Let's say you've got a find record in a form, right? And then later on you change the format of the form where you put an input mask on it. Well, that's gonna break your search right there, right? Whereas record set clone doesn't care how the field is formatted on the form, it's what's in the table, right? Gives you professional polish, it gives your app stability and avoids macro-like quirks that can happen. You know, find record can flicker, shift focus, highlight text unexpectedly, uh, user clicks can mess it up, okay? And it's robust. Uh, DAO, data access objects, right? Record set clones, that's another word for it. It works even when the form is hidden or running in the background. Some other stuff you can do with it. Counting records without changing the user's position. You can check how many records the form currently has, even with the filters applied without moving the form's pointer. And yeah, there's other ways to do that with like a count function and stuff or a decount. But again, if the record set clone already exists, you can access the record set clone count property and it's, it's, it's much, much faster. You can loop through filtered records, process only what the form is showing, leaving the form itself untouched. I'm gonna go over this in the extended cut with the members. You can actually loop through the records that are visible, even after the user has applied multiple filters, you don't have to try to figure out what those filters are. You just access the record set clone. So if they've taken a list of customers, you know, first letter has to be a G and it's from New York State and this filter and that filter. Okay, now mark all those people active. Boom, it's done. You don't have to go and try and figure out what the what the filter is or what the the order or the um the SQL statement was that the user created the form with. Doesn't matter. That's a handy. I use that one all the time myself. Aggregations. Once you've got the record set clone built, you can sum, average, max, min, all that stuff. As we know, domain functions are slow, right? D lookup, D count, D max, D min, all those, those are really slow. So once you got the record set clone already built, you can aggregate those fields. Uh, finding duplicates or related records is easy. You can build custom navigation buttons. You can loop through the records, right? You can make your own next previous buttons instead of using the, you know, the form to move back and forth. You move back and forth through the record set clone and then set the bookmark. There are actually some benefits to doing it that way. You can do background validation, check to see if values exist before you allow a save. And yeah, you can do some of that stuff with just the regular form too. But again, you have to use domain functions half the time. Multi-record updates. This is kind of what we're going to cover in the extended cut too. You can do some export or reporting preparation. You can walk the clone. Walk the clone basically means start at the beginning and then walk through all the records, right? Move next. To build a collection, an array, a custom data set, a temporary table. There's all kinds of things you can do. Another trick I like to do is you can set up multiple bookmarks, like in a memory array, and then you can return to those bookmarks later. 
Um, and you can do batch deletes. That's always fun, right? We try not to delete records, but sometimes, especially if you're dealing with temporary data, it's okay to delete that. All right, now, as I mentioned in the extended cut, we're gonna do just that. We're going to loop through whatever's in the form, the record set clone, and we're gonna make a button that says, make everybody visible active. So you can put a filter on by name, you can filter by ID, you can set the state as New York, customer sends this, credit limit under whatever, and then hit go, and it just marks all of the guys with that, you know, with whatever filter you set up, mark all those people active or inactive or whatever you wanna to do to it. And it's so much better than the old school way, which is go to the first record, set it active, go to the next record, set it active, go to the next record, set it active. We do it all in the record set clone, and it's so much faster and easier. So that's what a record set clone is. This is a more advanced topic. I am going to be covering this in a lot more detail in my Access Developer course. We're in uh, like Developer 52 or 3 right now, and we're doing a class modules. But when I think when I'm done with that, we're going to spend some more time on record set clones because there's all kinds of cool things you can do with them. But that's going to do it for your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I will see you next time. And members, I will see you in the extended cut. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there, just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus you get access to my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject. And you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.